the Cube for the past year that we've been in operation has been very, very successful. And uh, you know, companies do pay us to come here. I think the companies who bring us in with the Cube get two things. They get a third party independent resource to provide knowledge to their audience who are seeking it, this demand for the, for the product. And also complements their existing media. Uh, we're here at an event and uh, you know, the, the company has their own TV organization and they have to pay a premium for that. So we complement that by offering a objective, organic, Good morning, I'm Kristen Folletti and welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, June 11th, 2013. Today, NetApp announced a new version of their flagship storage OS, Clustered Data on Tap. SiliconANGLE was the first to get an insider's opinion on the latest announcement, and our very own founding editor, Mark Risen Hopkins, took an exclusive interview with Eric Eisman, senior systems architect for the Advanced Systems Group, to discuss storage trends and provide details on the cluster data architecture and its growing popularity in the marketplace. Let's take a look now at how their discussion unfolded. Founding editor Silicon Angle, and uh, I am here today speaking with uh, Eric Eisman, who's a senior systems architect for the Advanced Systems Group. Uh, you uh, are here to talk a little bit about, uh, uh, well, what your organization does, and we're going to talk some storage today. So, thanks for uh, thanks for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. So, uh, yeah. So let's start. Let's start with what you guys do. I mean, you guys uh, uh, are, are are deep in the the whole uh, converged infrastructure storage business. You guys know. Or you guys are the people to talk to if we wanted to spot a trend, if we wanted to uh, understand uh, go, or go deep. So, let's talk about what you guys do first. You know, just just give us the rundown, the elevator pitch, if you will. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, we are a uh, we're based in Denver and we're a western half of the U.S. Um, data center infrastructure company. Mm -hmm. So we do um, reselling of hardware and software and architectures, designs, data center moves. Uh, we were very large in the Sun space all throughout the 90s. Um, we are very large in the Hitachi data center space and in the NetApp data center space, as well as the converged infrastructures or, you know, that you hear about around unified computing and things like that. So, so uh, we, we've talked to NetApp uh, a lot recently uh, about the ONTAP and, uh, of course, the CDOT uh, announcement. Uh, so uh, I was going to start off with, uh, you know, what, uh, let's talk about the broader, the, the broader topic, why customers choose the clustered architecture in the first place. I mean, what's, what is the, the benefit over a more, uh, more traditional or more uh, uh, common, common uh, use case scenario? The main thing that uh, what used to be called C mode is now clustered data on tap mm -hmm. is the fact that you can uh, decouple the access from the back end data. So you can move the actual data blocks themselves between pieces of your array or expansions in the array, different nodes, and you can leave the front end access, whether it's IP or fiber channel, in the same position. Or vice versa, you can move the access, the actual access layer off to different nodes, leaving the blocks in place. And this allows you a lot of flexibility in doing things like maintenance, doing things like upgrades. You don't have to take outages anymore. You can move one piece at a time. Here's the access portion, and we're going to move it to a new controller. And then here's the data blocks that will move behind it to get it onto the new destination disk. So it opens up flexibility. It opens up the ability to change and change your mind. So, so that would be the the differentiator from uh, like from uh, from a uh, that on tap or the C dot thing provides is is that the, the kind of the flexibility that's not there before, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so who are you moving to this type of? I mean, who, who are the candidates, the use cases for this type of technology? Uh, I guess I mean, is, is this a is this a one size fits all or is this a horses for courses thing? Well, it, mainly. Well, you can think about it in a couple of different ways. The people who are having, the, I guess, the most immediate need are those that are have really exploding unstructured data. Okay. Uh, this is happening pretty much across the board in most verticals, especially if you do anything with video or with imaging, whether they be satellites or cameras or anything like that. You find that you're coming in with these uh, 
large payloads of already deduped, already compressed codec type data. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps going up and up and up as the resolutions go up, the sizes go up, the retentions go up. And really, I think that's the first pass, but everyone you know, is having this problem in almost all businesses, whether it's uh, GIS information for municipalities, or it is geo information for oil and gas, um, or like I said, security information, you know, those types of customers, they're exploding so fast, it's really hard to make a storage design that is gonna last years and years and years. Right. Just right. go into it understanding that you're gonna have to revisit it at least once a year, and every couple of years you may have to completely rethink it. And so being able to change it without taking the service down to the applications is a great advantage. Because you can say, you know, I can't see the future forever. I can't see 10 years out. So I know I can rearrange things, buy things, decom things, and I don't take the apps down. Right. So, um, yeah, so it sounds like uh, the, the, there's, there's, certain, there's certain use cases, certain customers that are going to be uh, getting this sooner, than, sooner rather than later, but it's, it generally sounds like it's a, a potentially a one-size-fits-all or one-size-fits-most one size uh, down the yes. road then. Yeah, that's been um, part of NetApp's advantage forever since they run the same operating system on all their gear. Mm -hmm. As soon as you can get to 8.2 and the new architecture, then when you can do these migrations and you can upgrade, downgrade, scale up and scale out. So, And then you're not changing any access layer configuration to the applications, which is the most important thing. You know, We're here to serve the apps and the apps serve the business. So. If I can do the maintenance or rearrange things and bring in different disk technologies and never take the app down, then that's a great advantage. We can do our jobs in the data center and we can feel comfortable doing the right things and we don't have to keep getting in front of the business and saying, ah, you can't use that today. So, so you mentioned that Converged is, is something that you guys uh, really focus strongly on there. So what percentage of customers there are, are really, uh, are, well, are there implementing Converged infrastructure, or currently running Converged infrastructure systems? Probably between a quarter and a third. Quarter and a third. So um, actually, brought have some footprint of it, and that they're bringing it in. Yeah. So is is there uh, what's what's the percentage that are looking to transition? Is that what's the movement? Um, uh, very high. Very over high. three quarters. Three quarters. Um, everyone, we have lots of discussions around what is it, mm -hmm. and what does it mean to you and your business, and what are the advantages and disadvantages, and what's hype and what's a buzzword and what's reality, and how this can actually help you run data centers and serve your apps. So we're having a lot of conversations with customers about what is it and helping them build architectural roadmaps. Because you know it's you can't just go in and bulldoze your data center. It's not a very efficient thing to do. Yeah. And so a lot of people are going, okay, we've got this shining city on a hill that we're trying to get to. So how do we get there from here? And how do you piecewise do it in a fashion that's non-disruptive, uh, both to services and to the budgets? So we're doing a lot of architecture plans with customers on how do you get there from here and what will you get what advantages will you have every step along the way? Right, right. So what I mean, so what is the, what's what's the biggest uh, like little, uh, you know, sh uh, I guess beacon that you put on that that road to to, to pull them into the convert? I mean, because they want to get there, but like, what? How do you explain it to them? You know, how do you? What's what's the way you explain the separation of the hype from the reality on converged? Uh, we really talk about how um, turning things more towards the business, mm -hmm. really. At, you know, being able to change is an important aspect. Sure. So, and you don't know if you're going to have an upper management change or an acquisition or a divestiture. So basically, be prepared for change. Mm -hmm. So when that change happens, back the, back the business down and say, talk to me very simply. Give me very short sentences and nice, simple ideas. What do you want this application to do? How do you want this service to work? And then, oh, okay. I great, now I have a list of criteria, I will go build configurations to meet those criteria. And so basically, you don't know what the business is going to throw at you. Mm. Uh, I can't predict three years from now what they're going to want or who they're going to buy. So the ability to redesign on the fly and morph to meet those needs, something that started out a year and a half ago as some kind of niche corner service you know, application, yeah, that's really nice. It's now 18 months later and it's exploded. Everyone loves it. Well, we didn't really architect it to be the app of the company, and now we need to, and being able to do those kinds of things. So and that's how we meet, what we think Converged is, is you, everything coming together in a flexible fashion mm -hmm. so that you change. Uh, another another little uh, buzzwordy uh, uh, 
kind of thing that helps helps customers with uh, or helps you know, anybody with with uh, adaptability and change and focusing on business processes rather than infrastructure is the uh, software led infrastructure. Everyone's using its terminology now: software led networking, software led data center. Uh, what is the customer sentiment around not just the the, the term but the concept? Uh, is that is that something that uh, you're is this uh, you know successful terminology uh, re resonating with your customers, or is this something that they kind of resistant against because it's kind of trendy right now? I think it's got a little bit of the buzzword issue to it. Mm -hmm. um, if we explain it more simply and say we're trying to decouple um, configurations and services to the apps from all this big geeky gear in the data center. That tends to resonate as a definition for them. Like, oh, what do you mean by software defined? Well, that means I'm meeting your needs. I'm doing whatever it is you wanted me to do when you told me about this app. But I can go change the big racks of gear, and I can do my job and make sure it works easily. So mm -hmm. kind of decoupling those instead of having them being so tightly wound together, meaning uh, if we need more performance and we hit some kind of you know design limitation of what we deployed, then it's a whole lot of rework. Right. It's, a whole, it's a huge effort. And so I think that message resonates with customers and they get that. They go, oh, okay, I can understand that. So software, you know, software design data centers and software design storage and things like that, they're really about decoupling those things. Sure. Well, Eric, I, I really appreciate this about all the time we have today, so I wish we could keep going. Uh, it's a very interesting topic and I love getting a, kind of a finger on the pulse of, of, of where the, uh, the market is moving. But uh, so if, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, hopefully we'll have time to chat again soon. Okay, thank you very much. All right. That was Eric Eisman, Senior Systems Architect for the Advanced Systems Group, discussing converged infrastructure storage trends. And a special thanks to our very own Mark Risen Hopkins for conducting that interview. And fill up on your daily dose of tech news. Your SiliconANGLE Daily Roundup is up for you next here on News Desk. We looked at all the programs out there and identified a